Hi everybody. Let's very quickly create a single page application for selecting Christmas presents. So Christmas gift chooser. So then we go next, we select the Angular JSC template and we're going to create a UI that can be displayed either in mobile phones or in the browser or on the desktop which will list the number of presents to the user and the user can select which one they want and then the prices will be added up together and displayed as well to the user. So we can see that the Angular JSC template gives us a whole bunch of stuff, a nice structure as the basis of our application. We can immediately run this into the embedded browser, we can also run it into the external browser, we can run it into, the, um, into Android, we can uh, run it into iOS if we use Cordova, which we can do from inside this IDE, NetBeans. Um, so here's our starting point. Now we don't need all of the stuff, so let's just quickly remove it all. And let's just quickly delete that line. This uh, menu here is interesting as a starting point, but we don't care so much for it, for what we want to do. Um, we also have a style sheet full of stuff that relates to that menu stuff that we can also delete. So this is also nice and empty. And here is our starting point. So the starting point comes from our partial file. And we're going to start by using the really powerful ng repeat directive. So we'll assign here ng repeat and you can read it uh, if you're on the right one here ng repeat the ng repeat directive instantiates a template once per item from a collection each template instance gets its own scope where the given loop variable is set to the current collection item and the index is set to the item index or key and there's a lot more information to read from the built-in documentation so the ng repeat I'm going to say one gift, you could say one present, but it's a little bit too much typing. So one gift in all gifts. And um, that's what you want to repeat. So we're going to iterate through all the gifts that we get from the controller. And for each item, we're going to have a JSON object returned to us, which will have a name. We're going to put this onto a separate line so that it's a little bit more readable. So we're going to have a name and we're also going to have a price and it's also handy that Angular comes with the possibility of setting a currency which we can also change from US dollars which is the default currency as we're going to see. So now we need to in the scope create a new function for all the gifts and we do that so we're just going to open our controller file and just to remind ourselves what we've defined in the HTML file we'll just move it to one side there. So um, here we go we create our first function and we will have our scope and after we have our scope we're going to say all oh, um, gifts you can see that's what it was and then we'll create some gifts and each of those gifts will be a JSON object and there will be multiple of these and we can see that we want each gift to have a name and a price so name equals uh, for calling birds and the price is 20 so here's one of them, one of our JSON objects and here's the second one so 3 French hens. It's less than four calling birds, but French hens are maybe much more expensive, so we'll make the price 60. Um, press save. So I pressed save, and immediately I can see in the browser the JSON objects. So um, I've not saved this yet. So four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. And this is really pricey. Uh, dot fifty. So there we can see um, our gifts. 
Now let's assume we don't want US dollars, so we can type right in there that we care about euros instead. So you can completely adapt the currency very easily. There we go. Um, here are our gifts. Now let's style them. Let's style them. And that's why well, we have a style sheet. So we open the style sheet. And for list items, we're going to start by saying that list items should have font size set to 20 pixels. And immediately you can see in the browser the result of uh, making that change. So the next thing we want to say is that there should be some padding. And the padding will be 20px and, and 30px. And you can see already the impact of that. And we say that the, we're going to have a margin at the bottom to create some space. Margin bottom is 80px. And what else shall we say? Let's say a background color. Background color and it's a nice color chooser. So tomato is a nice color. There we go. So now we're getting there. So now color is going to be white, which will at the same time also remove those bullets for us. And um, what else? It's also when the user moves over these items, say that the cursor should be a pointer. So I think that's all we really need to do. Um, and also, what if our list item is active? Then it should look a bit different to show the user that it's active. So in that case, we're going to have a different background color, which will set to some nice positive color, whatever that is. So we're going to see what that is in a moment, but it will be greeny, greeny color. So um, this is done. And now we do a little bit of work inside of our HTML. So I'm just going to put each of our um, Angular directives on a separate line to make it a bit more readable. And um, the first thing, when we click on here, we want to make a change. Um, so there is a um, possibility of changing dynamically the CSS, the ng class allows you to set CSS class on HTML element dynamically by data binding an expression that represents all classes to be added. So here we're going to say, so our expression is going to be, so here's Angular expression language in here. So the active one um, will be the one that we pass in as being active. And we also set something else. We want this to happen on the click. So ng click and on our so you can see here um, ng click allows you to specify custom behavior. So what is the custom behavior? The custom behavior is going to be defined um, in a method a function that we create in our controller where we pass in our one gift. Okay, so let's switch to the controller and here we will oh we are here already so no need to open another file. Um, so here's our, here's our scope. So here's the first one. So here's the second one. And now we're going to say, um, put a semicolon at the end. And you can see what that method is. The function is called switch active. Switch active. And what is switch active going to do for us? So let's remove all of this stuff. I have a new function space function tab and we will not give it any name instead what we're going to do here is receive in the function we receive our one gift so you can see here we're passing in one gift and depending on the boolean set um, we're going to say that it is either or not active so now we can switch you can see the result of doing this Let's quickly format, so we can right click in here and choose format to make it look a bit better, all aligned nicely. And this is all working now. So final step that we want to do in our little application is present the total of the um, selected items to the user. And we could do it at the bottom, but let's do it at the top so that we can see it without having to scroll down. Um, so we say, um, that the total so here we type total and i press save 
there's total and again we use a nice little angular expression which tells um, this page to look for the total method in the controller and again we'll use currency uh, so right now there's um, actually nothing that um, we want to have returned and we're going to go in here and create the total so right now we are switch active and we want this to be now our new function total and total is not going to receive anything um, yet so we have a function where we say var total equals zero and we will return the zero and you can see immediately we have our currency set we have zero returned but instead we're going to do a little bit of calculation now um, and just, just make some space here angular for each so for each of what for each of our in our scope so in our scope we have all gifts and here we're going to do a function for those gifts so here is our function and let's move this a bit we're basically done with the HTML for the for this little exercise and um, so for each of them if it is active otherwise we don't want to present the total to the user if the item is active we're going to say total and add to the total the price of the item so right now whoops add to the total the price of the item and we don't have anything passed in, so now we do, right? So we're passing in the one gift, and if it is active, we pass in the price of the item. So, um, and we don't return zero, of course, we return the total. Small mistake. There we go 20, 60, and now we'll add them. 20 and 60 is 80. And there you go, I think anyone watching this is ready to create a single page application to present Christmas presents to the user for selection and for displaying the totals of the selected items. Thanks and have fun with Angular.